Hello everyone, my name is Kaden King, and on this channel I tell interesting or scary Reddit stories that I found online. This is a safe space to enjoy stories of the unknown. If you have any stories of your own that you'd like to share with me, you can message me on Instagram or even post on the channel's subreddit page with a link down below in the description. But for now, enjoy the video. Does anyone know what this creature slash thing is? I'm from the south of England, I don't believe in ghosts and imagine it to be something else, but I've never seen anything like this. I live next to a woodland area, 60 acres of forest. England isn't really known for its predators, especially down here, apart from a big cat that once escaped, which would be long dead by now. It's winter, 6am, so still dark. And I was walking my dog before work, and I was walking by these woods and enjoying the birds chirping away. Suddenly all of the birds stop, and I can hear one bird chirping in the tree, about 5 meters away, and as I look, I met with a gaze looking back at me. It was no bird. It was dark, almost too dark to see a body. The tree was next to a street lamp shining down on it, and apart from the outline on what seemed to be human, for the most part, about 4 foot, it had weird glowing eyes. At first I thought I'm seeing things, being half asleep still, and decide to ignore it, but couldn't after my dog saw it. She became very defensive and wouldn't leave my sight apart from me to draw me away from it, whining and barking at this thing heckles up. I'm still half asleep and pass it off leaving, but whatever it is keeps running back and forth my front door at a speed and I can barely see it. What the hell is this and how do I make it go away? About a month ago I went to Walgreens to pick up my anxiety meds after work. There was a small line and I was at the back. When it was my turn there, was still no one behind me and I was barely paying attention since I was thinking about grocery shopping and dinner. Typical after work thoughts. The guy behind the counter says, how can I help you? And I tell him my name first and last. I have an unusual name and I always have to spell it since people think it starts with an S and not a C. As I'm about to start spelling it, the man is already typing it in his computer. Hmm. Okay, that's weird but I shrug it off. He doesn't ask me to confirm my address, which is also strange, but I don't think much of it because I just want to get my mats and leave. Then he says, are you in a hurry? And I quickly say, yes, because I don't want to make small talk. There's awkward silence and I'm putting it in my car to pay. Oh, that's too bad. I wanted to take you out and I'm almost done working. I'm clearly uncomfortable and I don't say anything. Then he asks me to type in my phone number and it feels even weirder since he just asked me out. But I have to type it in to get my meds. Am I overreacting? He has access to my medical records, phone number, address, etc. It was unprofessional and it gave me a bad feeling. And it's almost time for me to go back and get my refill. I normally am a nighttime walker because I have a cat that roams as well. I sometimes like to make sure he's okay or that the roads are clear. I don't want to get into more details about my cat being outdoors, but I do come from a toxic abusive family, dynamic, and they won't allow him indoors. I'm also on disability, so yeah, I'm a loser still living at home. Anyway, I'm 36 years old, and I make sure I'm aware of my surroundings. I take precautions when I'm walking. I've had randoms stop and ask me a question sometimes, but never experienced something like this. So I walk out at midnight. I normally do a brisk walk and I'm fine. But this time as I'm reaching the end of the street, I turn back to walk home. A man in a big white van stops and asks me a question. He asks what am I doing and where am I going? And I say I'm walking home. He then proceeds to suggest that I take a lift home from him because he doesn't want to see me walk home alone at night. I decline his request and tell him to leave me alone and that I can walk home safely if he carries on driving. So he drives his van and then makes a U-turn back to where I'm walking, as if to watch me walk home and maybe see where my home is. And I stop walking, waiting for him to go past, but he doesn't. And then he also stops his van. He says to me, he just wants me to go home safely, and again requested me to get in his van, and I declined. Now I'm very angry, and I say stop following me home. I'm a woman, I can't show you where I live. And then he drives off slowly, but stops at my street, which was right up ahead. I decide to take a U-turn and run into one of the roads where I can hide. He doesn't show up and I think he's gone, so I come out of hiding. I walk slowly just in case I see him. I then see a car's headlights. 
approaching around the bend and I quickly jump into this arrangement of big plants on the sidewalk. I easily ducked down and he didn't see me. I saw his white van driving real slow past me and he turned into the road I had just come from. He then makes a U-turn and goes back the way he came from. I waited a while and I felt like a cat at the moment, hiding, waiting for a safe time to come out again. Finally, the coast was clear and I couldn't see his van anywhere, so I made a run for home. Thank God I made it home safe and sound. I made sure to look around me and in the shadows to see if he parked his van anywhere and I didn't see his van. I don't know who that man was and whether he was really looking out for my safety or whether he was up to something else. What do you guys think? I'm sat beside myself now with a cup of tea trying to process what just happened. So the setting is 2015. My sister and I are home alone watching Craigslist horror stories on YouTube. A bit ironic, I know. Now for reference, I was 13 while my sister was 17 and having these watch parties had become something of a habit as it was our last year together before she went off to college. We lived in a safe neighborhood and nothing had really happened at that point that would give us any reason to be anxious about being alone. Anyways, time goes on and my sister suggests we order pizza since she's starving. I'm not one to turn down pizza, so I naturally agree and we place an order at a local pizza place. We continue watching our videos for another 15 to 20 minutes before I step out to use the restroom. Just then I hear the doorbell ring followed by my sister getting up to go answer it. So I carry on with my business with the assumption it was just the pizza. I'd say only two minutes had passed as I came back and realized my sister was still at the door talking with someone. I couldn't really make out what was being said but I knew it was definitely a man's voice responding to her. As I go to see what's going on, my sister promptly shuts the door, pizza in hand. I initially assumed maybe there was just an issue with payment so I just teased my sister for taking so long and go sit down. I know. Who thought a 13 year old boy who could be an oblivious asshole? It didn't take long for me to realize though that my sister wasn't eating despite this whole thing being her idea. And even more so, she had a very nervous look on her face now and wasn't speaking much. I asked her what's up and then she proceeds to tell me that when she opened the door to greet the pizza guy, he looked at her as if he was checking her out and followed up by giving her the most unsettling smile she's ever seen. She was just trying to get the pizza and go, as we had already paid online, but the creep insisted on trying to make conversation with her. The man pretended to fumble around trying to get the pizza box out of his bag, all the while asking very personal questions that he certainly had no business asking, like how old she was and if she was alone. Now I admit Lee thought she was just messing with me. I mean, stuff like that can never actually happen to people you know, right? But nevertheless, it still left me feeling a bit anxious. We tried to enjoy the food and move on, and I'd say about an hour or two later we had finally calmed down about the whole thing. Right as we were getting ready to clean up and go back to our own rooms, there's a knock at the door, a very loud and aggressive one at that. We share the same nervous look, then hesitantly slip over to a window to see if we can get a look at whoever's knocking. Now I hadn't seen the guy, but my sister immediately recognized him as the pizza guy from before. We were contemplating calling the police. But the guy only knocked once or twice more before getting in his car and taking off way too fast down the road. Almost like he knew if he continued he was more than likely going to end up in a lot of trouble. We made a round around the house making sure everything was locked up and then waited for what felt like ages for our parents to finally get home. My sister told them about what happened but our mom insisted we were just being dramatic. That we had just made ourselves nervous because of the videos we were watching. While we both initially insisted on being serious we eventually just gave up and tried to move on from the whole thing. We ordered pizza from that place a few more times, but thankfully we never saw that same delivery man again. Nothing else ever came of the situation, but I can't help but think about what could have happened if that creep had just been a bit more persistent. What if he had kept trying to get into the house, or if we had accidentally left the door unlocked? I think his intentions were obvious, and I can only hope that his behavior has caught up with him, and that he's somewhere getting the help that he most definitely needs. I would really like opinions on something that I've been experiencing lately. Three weeks ago, on the weekend, a guy stopped me in the street and asked for my number. I was on my way to the local supermarket, so he was talking to me, and as we were talking, I engaged in polite small talk conversation with him. Part of the conversation transpiring 
we are both local to the area, and he asked for my number, saying he said to his friends he saw a pretty girl and wanted to get her number, and they told him to go for it. I admired that he had had the confidence to stop me and ask my number, as who does that anymore? So I put my number in his phone and made my way to where I needed to go. He texted me and after a few back and forths over the course of the weekend of whatsapps, I decided I wasn't really feeling it so I stopped replying. This was Sunday. The next day on my walk home from work I noticed him opposite me at the set of traffic lights and we made eye contact. I thought it was a bit awkward as I hadn't texted him back. But we didn't acknowledge each other in any way other than a look. What I found odd was the next day, in the exact same location, the same thing happened again. The next week I received a voice note from him asking if I wanted to do anything. I just wanted to say thank you for the offer but I wasn't interested. He replied saying no problem let me know if I change my mind and gave me his Instagram handle to follow which I didn't. Mine is private too. Later that week, on two separate occasions, I walked past him face on a shopping street close to where I live and close to the traffic lights before. There has now been five times in three weeks since I first met him that I have seen him on the street face to face. I thought it was just a typical coincidence, although weird. What freaked me out is this evening, upon leaving a small supermarket about seven minutes from my house, I looked to my right and he was just stood outside of it and again looked me in the eye. I felt really unsettled and quickly made my way home. This now takes it to six separate encounters. I am unsure whether I should not worry about this and just accept that it's a funny coincidence or whether I should take this seriously. I don't live alone and have kept my housemates aware and they have said they will keep an eye out for him. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite. Don't forget to subscribe and if you'd like to support the channel, there are links down below in the description, along with a few links to buy my dark fantasy novel. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Until next time, bye bye.